Barbara, thank you for joining us today. Glad to be here, Candy. Um, always love spending this time with you guys on, on Think Tank Thursdays. They're uh, very, very special and um, very informative. So thank you for having me. Before we jump in today, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about your background? Oh, dear. I'm almost embarrassed to say that I have been doing this for over 40 years now. Uh, but I am a certified HR human resource professional. So I have an extensive background in all things related to employees, uh, whether it be handbooks, job descriptions, uh, things of that nature, um, coaching, counseling on dealing with problem children, or uh, actually coaching and counseling when we want to reward someone and working on those kinds of plans. So it's not always, HR is not always negative. We uh, also promote some positive uh, things as well. And in addition to doing the human resources, payroll, processing, benefits, we also do some bookkeeping as well. So we call ourselves a business solutions organization, providing concierge service in all areas related to business solutions. Awesome. Are you still teaching as well, Barbara? Absolutely. I'm uh -huh. in my 19th year of teaching at Florida Atlantic University. I teach human resource professionals. I help prepare them for their certification exam, which is kind of like getting your CPA if you're an accountant or passing the bar if you're an attorney. Uh, in the human resource world, having this certification means that you really know your stuff. So I am uh, started the fall term and now with, I'm in going into my 19th year of doing that and just love it. I love paying it forward. I love telling, teaching people and just sharing my knowledge and paying it forward. Awesome, awesome. Well, I brought you on this week to talk about background checks because lots of people are hiring new people. And so like, should I do it? Should I not? Why is it important? What is a background check even? What type of information am I even looking for? There's so many questions when it comes to background checks. And so who else to ask but an HR expert? Well, that's absolutely true. And yes, background checks are really important. Um, some people fear them because they feel that um, and doing that or giving information out, they can get in trouble. Um, and that's negligent hiring. And I know we'll, we'll be talking about that. But with regard to the background check, you really want to make sure that you're hiring people that are going to be a, a good fit for the organization, that there's not going to be anything, any surprises that are going to pop up. Um, you want to make sure that you verify their social security number. There's a e-verify, you can use that. The government has a, a program that you can use to verify social security numbers. Uh, you want to verify their employment. You want to verify education. Again, depending upon the individual that you're hiring, um, you might wanna have different criteria for different jobs. Now you don't wanna have different criteria for individuals because you wanna eliminate or avoid any type of liability with discrimination. But let's say you've got somebody who works with cash. So you may want to do a credit background check on those individuals, but you may not want to do a credit background check on, say, you know, in the bowling world, maybe the mechanic doesn't need to have a, cr a credit check on them unless they are ordering, they have the authority to order, you know, expensive parts and you just don't know what's going on when you have your checks and balances. But you, you, you know, credit checks are important. If the individual is gonna drive on business, you wanna make sure that you've checked their motor vehicle background to make sure that they don't have any concerns or any um, history with issues of that nature. If they're working with children, you wanna make sure you do a background check to see if they um, have had any issues uh, with, uh, I don't even like to say it, but pedophilia or anything like that. You want to make sure those individuals don't have a background in that area for your own protection, because if you don't do a background check and you hire that individual and something comes along later on that you should have known about because of doing a background check, you could be held liable for that. So you just need to be careful and it's better to check and make sure and um, there's different tips on how to do those background checks as well, especially when you're reference checking former employers. Um, so I know mean, um, you have some questions, so I'll let yeah, you. You're good. That. I'm going to unpack some of what you said. I think a lot of times when we think about background checks, people think very simplistically and they think, oh, well, I just need to do a criminal background check. And or they'll say something like, oh, they're under the age of 18. They won't have a background check and things like that. That's just one 
lane of background checks. And so you touched on, if I wrote them all down, I know that you touched on reviewing credit, reviewing motor vehicle, reviewing their job history, and then reviewing their criminal, like there is also the aspect of a criminal background. Um, What other types of things would you consider under that umbrella of background check just to educate our audience? workers, Workers comp. There are professional workers comp claim filers out there. They will jump from job to job, get themselves hurt, file a claim and collect workers comp, collect disability. And so you wanna make sure that this person, now there are some states that have made it, um, you're not able to get that information anymore. But if if there's a way for you to find out that information, um, there are people in the business of just going from job to job and filing a workers comp claim collecting what they can, and then they move on and go somewhere else and do the same thing. So workers' comp is something that a lot of people don't even think about that um, would be helpful to have that information to avoid hiring someone who's going to cost you in workers' comp and and those premiums. Now, these are lots of different types of checks. So do you have any tips for how do you find a reputable provider? Is there a provider that provides all of these or are you going to different sources for it? There are. You want to make sure that the company you use is a, um, I guess they're licensed, uh, but they have the ability to, they're, I'm not sure what you would call it. They're, they're registered to be able to do this and they understand the potential liability. So you don't want to just use anybody who's posting on the internet. You know, you go, you, you Google them and you find these companies. <laughs> you want to make sure it's a legitimate company that does everything properly. A company that is going to require you to have a signed authorization by the prospective employee. Um, if, because in the, in the old days, and like I said, I've been doing this for over 40 years, in the old days, the back of the application, you know, somebody would sign the application. In fact, most companies don't even use applications anymore. Everybody's yeah. using resumes and doing things online. But there used to be just a little disclaimer that you could hardly read without reading glasses that said you're giving the employer permission to check your background. Now, if you are going to do a background check, it is a separate document that says we are going to check your background and we need this information in order to verify all of the things that you've said on your application are correct. And so a reputable company will make sure that you have those documents before they'll even let you do a a check with them, with that organization. But um, yes, there's, there's several out there that are quite reputable and it's, and it's relatively affordable. I I have some clients that have used uh, uh, law firms, private investigators that can get very costly. Um, There are firms that will do it, companies out there that will do it for a lot a lot less. Okay. And they can pull all the different lanes under that umbrella of the background check that you You kind of, it's sort of like um, uh, with six, you get egg roll, you know, you pick and choose what you want. Uh So I know we do, we do background checks for clients and we use a particular company and we have different um, groupings of checks. So if, if one may be just a standard check, one may be standard with criminal. One may be standard with criminal and credit. One might might be just background, uh, motor vehicle check. And this company we use will also do those employment verifications where they'll actually reach out to the former employers. Oh, okay. um, Of course, it gets, that's when it starts to build up and and the cost gets higher. But if you, now I, I would say that if you've got an HR person on your team, um, it's always better to have that person do some digging. It's not, you don't necessarily call the references that are on that they've provided, but you call, you call the company and then you ask to speak to their that supervisor. That's, that's a little trick HR right. folks use because we kind of work around the HR department because some HR departments or companies will not give any information. They won't mm-hmm. even verify the employment. Um, but if you get a supervisor, sometimes you get, you get some good stuff that you might not normally get if you go through the person that was listed or through the HR department of the company. That's why on the other side, on the flip side, you want to make sure you've trained your managers that if they get a call 
doing a background check on any former employee, refer them to HR because they may give information out that could then cause potential liability on the employer's part if the information they gave out is not um, uh, proof, uh, proof. You know, like, oh yeah, we suspected they were on drugs, but there was never a drug ah. test, so you can't say that. Yeah. If you've got proof that they tested positive while on the job, then technically you, you need to say that because if you don't and that other employer hires that individual, you could be held liable for not giving information that they should have had in making their decision and hiring that person. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've had to do like mass hiring for, but at that most, a lot of times you would get, yes, they worked here. These are the dates. Yes, we would rehire them or no, we would not. And that was pretty much like, if you got the person who did it, that's, yep. those are the three points of information you could yep. try to get. I know dates of hire eligible for rehire. Those yep. are the things we give out. Right? Yes, yes. Now you've made reference to liability a couple of times in this conversation already. Um, so let's just go ahead and dive in into let not fun word. What is negligent hiring and what kind of examples would get someone in trouble for negligent hiring? One of the examples I said before I, I did bring up negligent hiring earlier. If you hire somebody and don't do a background check and let's say this person um, has been charged with um, pornography, okay? And you hire that person and then something comes up while on the job, you know, again, we're uh, most of our clients are, well, train entertainment's clients are in the entertainment world where there are children, there are birthday parties for kids and things like that. This person is now working with these children. It comes out, something happens and it comes out that they have a record or they're on that list. And you didn't do your due diligence to ensure that you're hiring people for the safety of those kids, you could be held liable for that. And that's what negligent hiring is. Hiring somebody who has a background on something that you should have found in the background check, but you didn't do a background check. You can't prove that you did a background check. Now, there may be something that comes up, but if you can show you did your due diligence, you would not be held liable. But it's when you don't do anything and you just willy nilly hire people. And I know a lot of businesses that do that. It's like we did reference checks on them. No, we just hire them. We let we see if they know it. And then if not, we let them go. It's expensive. There's, there's a cost to hiring people and letting them go if they don't work out. So you want to you want to protect yourself. You want to protect your company. You want to protect your clients and your employees, and your customers from any potential situation that could come up as a result of someone's background. Now, on the other hand, if somebody does have a, a history, and, and I, I, I won't give too many details on this, but I have been in a situation where somebody had a history of something that they were terminated for cause, and then I got a reference check on that individual for a future employer, and I knew what their history was and what they were gonna be doing for this future employer in any capacity with that employer would never have had an issue with what they were terminated for. I gave a good reference. P.S. that person now is 15 years with that organization has been promoted and has been a stellar employee because uh -huh. they got their act together. They got their life together. And, and I, I knew that what job they were gonna be doing for this other organization would not be an issue and they would not get in trouble and they would not cause harm to the employer. Got you got to use your head. You know what uh -huh. I mean? You got to, you know, you, you certainly would not um, have an alcoholic work in a bar or, you know, somebody who's, you know, has, has issues with chocolate work in a candy store, you know, that kind of yeah. stuff. But, you know, this person had an issue with something that that other job would not have been a problem. So, um, so we know our audience is mainly entertainment centers. So thinking about all those lanes of a background check, what background checks should they do to try to protect themselves from negligent, not being accused of negligent hiring? Right. I would say that um, 
and I did this with, with, I, I worked for family entertainment mm-hmm. center for a while. So I, our background checks were, if they were going to deal with cash, we did social security credit and criminal. If they were not going to work with cash, we did not do the criminal. I mean, we did not do the cat, the credit. Okay. It didn't matter. Um, most people don't drive for family entertainment. Yeah. So we typically did not do a DMV, but I did have a situation where I had somebody who had to go out and, you know, Saturday night, the bar was short with limes. And so they had to go out and, and buy the limes ended up in, in a car accident and had to have knee surgery. And it was a big mess. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a one-up thing. That's a certain situation that, you, yeah. you know, that could happen to anybody. So um, but basically in the family entertainment, I would make sure I did criminal and I would do criminal for everybody. So criminal, you say, is a pretty much blanket. Yeah, because that's okay. going to get those, you know, with, with working with kids. Um, you want to get the um, the credit if they're going to be dealing with the cash and then verify the social security number. That's a big one, too. There are. I, I, I just got a call from somebody that said, you know, can I hire somebody who doesn't have a social security card? You know, this is very innocent employer. Like, well, is you, there any way I can hire somebody who doesn't have a social security number? No. You can, right? They're just are different forms of identification that you have to have. No, you need to have a social security number, which identifies that you are eligible to work. Okay. If you don't have a social, if someone cannot produce their social security card, you kind of want to stay away from them. Uh, this was someone who was a, on a student visa here in the United States mm-hmm. and without, without proper documentation, a student visa is not enough to hire someone. They do not have the authority to work in the United States with just that, unless they're working at the university. That's what the I-9 is for, right? There's the two columns of the identity. That is the, if you, so if anyone out there has a question of, well, what identification does give them the right to work in the United States? If you go to the I-9 website, there is a um, sheet on there and there's column A, you just have to have one thing, all right? Or you need something from column B and something from column C. Right. I don't even know what's in those columns anymore, but I know that's the way it works still. Right. Like column A is the U.S. passport resident yeah. alien card. That verifies the, the person, identity, and eligibility to work. And then, and then you've got the B and C are identify, you know, to be able to identify who they are and then ability to work in the United States. The social security card is the one document that you have to show you can work in the United States. I know. Um, I will say that we were, when I used to hire, I was advised by our HR department that was owned by our parent company that you couldn't say social security card though. You had it, you gave them the options and said, you either need one thing from here or one thing from here and one thing from here. Right, because yes. if you said mo- a lot of businesses say, "Oh, I need a copy of your driver's license and your social security yes. card," yeah, you don't say that because if somebody doesn't drive, you're putting them in a position to to say, "I don't drive," and then they may feel you're going to hold that against them. Why don't you have your driver's license? Why aren't you driving? So you you don't you say, "Here's the form," and it's on the back of the form actually. Mm-hmm. So you just give them the form on the back. I need these. You got three days from the day I hire you, the day you start to provide this or I, you can't work here. Yep. Yeah. All right. So I find a reputable company. I get them to do the background check. They're just going to give me all of the information. So do you got any tips for deciphering all the information that one would get for what are the th- red flags that one really needs to look for? Well, on the back, and again, um, and we can just go through the criminal, the motor vehicle, and the credit. Like, what are the big red right. flags you see so, there? So let's look at the credit first, because there are laws that say if you are making an employment decision based on credit, and you decide not to hire that individual, that you need to give them that reason and give them time and say you know, your credit came back really bad and given the nature of the job you're going to be in, we, we can't hire you. However, if you feel that this information is not correct, here's where you go to get that cleaned up. And I have to tell you, there was somebody that, that almost everybody at Trainertainment knows that individual who had that problem when I hired them. They were a victim of identity theft. Oh, no. 
So we discovered it. They discovered it because we did that check for them on them. Okay. So you want to let them know. And that, and you, they need to know that's the reason. Uh-huh. Now, some employers may look at that, but say they're using something different as the reason why. Okay. So that's a little tip. I mean, it's not legal to do that, yeah. but there are employers that do that, that use another reason then other than, than the credit. So credit, you're going to look and you want to see, um, you know, ha- have they filed bankruptcy? Um, you know, do they have like seven pages of, you know, over 120 day past due? Uh, did they default on a mortgage, you know, foreclose on a mortgage? Um, what I, I overlook on credit, and I just heard recently that I believe they're not even going to have that be on credit reports anymore, are medical bills that have not been paid. Right. I would overlook that because we all know that if you don't have insurance and you have a major illness, um, you know, if they're paying on time, you know, you, you can pay $10 a month on a hospital bill and it's going to go on, you know, until you're hundred years old, but I don't hold medical, you know, delinquency against an individual. Um, also I have looked, so that's, that's credit. You, you got to mm-hmm. kind of look at that. And the report actually says that they've been on time or, or they're delinquent or, um, settled, um, account closed with past due amount, you'll see that kind of information on the credit report. Okay. On the criminal, again, I'll look at that and I'll see, I'm hiring somebody who's like 50 something years old. And when they were 22, they were arrested for, you know, possession of marijuana. Uh In some states, that's not even illegal. It's not illegal anymore. (laughs) But, but I, I will say, look, and there's been nothing on their record from 25 years ago to to when they're 50, I'll make concessions there too. So I'll review it. I typically don't let the supervisors see the results. I typically, get if you don't have an HR department, the business owner, and hopefully the business owner will not talk about it um, because there's some business owners that may gossip as well, but that should be kept confidential. That should be kept in lock files that no supervisor, no one else would have access to. And there are personnel file, a part of a personnel file, we're kind of getting off of background checks, Mm -hmm. but that information should be kept separate in a separate folder from all the other information about that employee. So that if a supervisor were to look through a file to see if they want to promote them or they want to give a raise, that information should be in a separate file that nobody has access to, but those that have a need to see it. Got it. The HR, the owner, if there's no HR, but but that individual that that knows it, but it shouldn't go beyond that. Got it. Okay. Um, you had mentioned job history earlier, and I would just like to know, like, what things do you look for for red flags for that? Because the things that I think were at one point traditionally taught, like don't hire somebody who has more than so many jobs. Don't hire somebody who has a gap in their employment. Those things are out the window now. Absolutely. And those are not the red flags that you'd be looking for in a job history report. So what are the red flags you might be looking for? There? Well, it depends upon the culture of your organization. Um, you know, I, I can tell you when I first started, I remember saying this person jumps around, they switch jobs every five years. Well, it's the opposite. Now, when someone's been with the company for 20 years, you go, well, what's wrong with them? Why haven't they moved around? Because people are looking to move more to grow and and just to change what they're doing. They don't wanna be in that rut of doing the same thing their entire lives. They're not making it a career. There are some exceptions, but it, it, in most cases with the, the later generations, they're not looking to stay someplace forever. Um, but you wanna to look to say, were they growing? Did they, or were they stagnant? Did they do the same job over and over again? Or did they move? you know, from say accounts payable to maybe, you know, accounts receivable, then accounting manager, then a controller, you know, just from an account looking at, at the finance department, but you, you want to just evaluate what are they doing and then look at their education too. Um, did they get, you know, there do some people still put the year they got their degree on, which that's not recommended because you can kind of calculate age at that point, yeah. but um, you know, did they get their degree in 1979 and now it's 2022 and they've done nothing, you know, so nothing to grow. Uh-huh. Um, 
oh, let's see what else. You'd be surprised what you get if you call and you talk to the supervisor. Um, I've done, I did a reference check where it was against my better judgment to hire the person and their previous supervisor said that they were okay, but they, you know, they, they were absent a lot and they, um, you know, were doing their job well, but it was sometimes hard to reach them or find them. And so they got hired anyway. And now the complaint is he's out a lot. Every time I go to call him, he's not responding. I always have to leave a message. And so why did you hire him then? You got that information and you still made the decision. Granted, it's hard to find people now. I know that. And so that was kind of one of the things, but now they're stuck. The guy's been with them now longer than 90 days and they're stuck with this person who really probably shouldn't have been hired in the first place. Yeah. It was a body and they were happy to get a warm body in the position, but it wasn't the best choice. So um, I guess, for, I mean, when you ask me, it's sort of like it's, it's inherent with HR folks that we can kind of get that feel and, and we, can, we can draw things out of people. Um, like, how do you ask them that question? Well, you just ask and you'd be surprised the answers you're going to get. Let them talk and they might give you more than you really need to know, but it's going to help you with what you need to make your sound, a sound decision in, in the employment, um, in, in the decision of employment. Awesome. All right. Um, any last tips about my background checks before I ask you the signature question? Uh, yeah, no, I think that that um, the, the only tip I say is just do it. Do it. As, it's as worth it. Class. It is worth it. Cost of everything. Brand. It's worth it. Just do it. Um, they're not that expensive if you want to do it on your own. Um, as far as you can find people and, and it's going to cost you less than $100 um, a person to get that, to do that background check. But having that peace of mind, I always tell business owners, I'm telling you this because I want you to sleep at night. Oh yeah, that's a good answer. If, if you don't, if you're okay with wondering what's what ball is going to drop or shoe is going to drop next, um, what crisis am I going to have to deal with next? Then don't do it. But if you want to be able to sleep, and well, we still have other things we have to worry about, but at least that's one less thing that will keep us up at night. Got it. All right. Um, well. But between now and the end of the year, we're going to have you on for two think tanks. So this think tank, I'm going to ask you what you're doing on a consistent basis to grow yourself. Next time I'll ask you what you're doing to grow others. For myself, I, um, I have belonged to several organizations that require, I have uh, uh, CEUs, you know, units. And so given my crazy schedule, about all I can do are take those CEUs. So I make sure every time that these organizations are offering opportunities for me to learn something new, I attend those. They're great. I get to meet fellow HR professionals. And so I get to network with them, build relationships, because you never know when I might need to call that person and do a background check. <laughs> so, so really those are webinars and things like that. Um, because textbooks and books are typically delayed in giving current information. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. You got to go through the publishing, the writing, all of that stuff. Right. Look at with the, for, with, um, with our, you know, when COVID hit and we were getting the PPP and we were dealing with EIDL loans and all that, there wasn't a textbook. There wasn't anything we were doing, you know, people who were making sure they learned it quickly and were putting on webinars. We were all scrambling to attend those. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know, Trade Entertainment was offering information and having experts on our think tanks to, to, um, you know, provide information to the, the our clients. It was and, changing too fast. It so. was. And so we were getting as, you know, day to day what's happening. And um, it was sad because a lot of people expected us to know it, but, but it, it was changing every day. So mm -hmm. um, that's why I say webinars and, and you know, I, I go to programs that attorneys, employment attorneys put on um, just, and then insurance programs, because what's going on with health insurance and um, you know, requirements of employers for that. So the Affordable Care Act, it's a amendment, what's going to happen. So all of those things. All of those things. All right, Barbara, if anybody wants more information, wants to contact you, I see it on the screen, but go ahead and tell us because right sometimes you cover up your email address when you're yeah. moving. So yeah. 
www.bflinnandpeoplefirstinc.com and our office is uh, 954-587-6100. So all right, well, to pay it forward. So please reach out. Oh, and you guys should follow her on the socials. She's always putting out like a payroll tip or a bit a quick video of something that may have just she may have just gotten news about this change or maybe this amendment coming. And so she'll put a video out there. So go and follow her also on the socials. She's putting out good content all the time. So all the time. All right. Thank you for spending your time with us today. And thank you guys for coming to Think Tank Thursday. Hello, my name is Brittany Betty, and I am the Regional Sales Director and Business Development Manager over at Betson Enterprises. Here at Betson, we are so excited to be a part of Trainertainment this year. For those of you who are unaware of Betson and what we do, we are the leading distributor of coin-operated equipment, and we are a family-owned business that has been around for 85-plus years. Please take a moment to watch a quick video on an introduction on the phased approach and turnkey solution we can offer you in your facility. Thank you so much for taking the time for watching. And if you have any questions and would like to reach out to me, I can be reached at my email at bbetty, B-B-E-T-T-I, at betson, B-E-T-S-O-N dot com. Please feel free to reach out to me with any questions or needs you might have in the family entertainment industry, and I would be happy to assist you. Thank you and have a great day. Are you looking for ways to maximize profits and consolidate systems and processes? Join the Party Center Software and Party Center Pay family. Our suite of solutions makes it easy for you to run your family entertainment center or event business. Our online party booking system makes booking parties and events a breeze. Our point of sale system, digital waivers, and reports will help you simplify steps for your staff and make your guest experience seamless. Our online store allows you to sell products, gift certificates, and other services anytime, even when you're sleeping. But it doesn't end there. All of the solutions mentioned connect with our payment processing platform, Party Center Pay, making it easier than ever to manage your business not only can Party Center Pay save you money by cutting out extraneous fees, but Party Center Pay makes it easy to take online deposits or full payments, and we even have a contactless payment option. Paired with our incredible support team and dedicated customer success managers, growing and managing your business has never been easier. Schedule a call with us today to learn more. My wife and I, you know, this is a partnership with her and I, so we both agreed that, you know, in in creating scary strokes, um, that we want to make sure that we have the best available of everything. You know, embed just seemed like the perfect fit, like, you know, it was pretty streamlined and had the, the point of sales and the, the software for the redemption, and it just seemed, you know, natural to us. So we've been with Embed since, since the very beginning. And so when, uh, when Embed, you know, it was introducing the mobile wallet, it seemed like a good opportunity for us to, to jump on, and it's wonderful. I mean, you don't, 
do you reload your card from it? You, you know, redeem your tickets from it. There's, there's nothing not to like about it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's very convenient. And it's uh, very clever for sure. Empowering your employees to manage your redemption area with confidence can be a challenge. The redemption counter is often the last stop your customers make before leaving your facility. That's why we do everything we can to help your staff make that experience one worth returning for. Our service packages allow you to reap the benefits of expertise and customer support no matter where your business is in its maturity. The advanced and pro service bundles are unmatched by any other redemption provider in the industry. They allow you to get the support you need when you need it. Gain confidence in your redemption program knowing your employees are taking advantage of benefits like exclusive redemption training, regular planogram refreshes, product performance and spending reports, and much more. All accessible from an online portal customized to your business. Learn more at services.redemptionplus.com.